Hey, this is Walter Jones. This is Austin St. John. And you're listening to Ranger Danger. In the podcasting life, they must fight to survive. Shackled by the chains of the past. They're the biggest of geeks, cause they watch every week. Subscribe to see if they can last. Go, go, Ranger Danger. Welcome once again to Ranger Danger Dino Charge, the podcast where we watch an episode of the TV series Power Rangers Dino Charge, and then after that, we discuss it. Michael, welcome to the show. Hey Matt, how are you doing? I'm doing fantastic. I'm ready to make art. Okay, can we make a (laughs) podcast instead? Our podcast is art. I don't know what you're talking about. Today, we're going to be watching episode 782 of Power Rangers, also known as episode 2 of Power Rangers Dino Charge, also known as Past, Present, and Fusion. Yes, we are. I'm pretty excited. I enjoyed last I'm, episode. I'm super last episode. excited. You know I've been sending you excited messages all day. I do know that. I'm acutely aware. Now, before we get started watching some Dino Charge, doing some fantasy Zord on, what do we have on the agenda? Okay, so we've got... Uh, it's Toy Fair at the moment in New York. And for anyone who's not familiar with it, Toy Fair is basically the opportunity for kind of all the big toy manufacturers to show off what they've got coming up in the next year. Yep. And all of the, like, both the kind of toy blogs and also the people who buy and sell toys to Toys R Us can go around and go, yeah, we'll take, like, 6,000 boxes of that, and that's Tickle Me Elmo, that's going to be huge, and all that sort of stuff. Sure. People do love Tickle Me Elmo. They certainly did a decade and a half ago. I don't remember when Tickle Me Elmo was. I'm sure, much like Power Rangers, Tickle Me Elmo was big enough that it created fans for life. Oh, I mean, that's... uh, maybe. You think there's, like, a Tickle Me Elmo podcast? I guess there's only really one Tickle Me Elmo you could review. Yeah, well, no, there were several versions of the Tickle Me Elmo. That's something oh, that I'm aware of. We're getting way down like, the rabbit sh- hole now. <laughs> I'm sure that there, be- I'm sure that there was a version like into the mid 2000s where he like danced around and stuff. Okay, that does sound vaguely familiar. I'll give that to you. Right. So you know, Tickle Me Dancy Elmo. I don't know. Anyway, so Toy Fair. Power Rangers. Yeah. Yeah. First things first, uh, a whole load of Dino Charge action figures and stuff. Okay. It looks like we're getting, like, a ton of Dino Charge bad guys as well. That's cool. Uh, Monsters and, like, kind of proper bad guys. Yep. Which I believe the kind of Mega Force, Super Mega Force line in particular was very light on villains. Okay. So it is kind of cool to see, you know, a couple of, like, just monsters of the week that kids can play with and have their rangers punch the shit out of, I guess. Yeah, I was going to say, I don't know what kids do these days, but back when I was young, the point of action figures was to have good and bad ones so they could engage in combat. Yep, certainly. Good combat, you might say. I wouldn't, but you might. So... Uh, that stuff is cool, but I don't know about you, I'm not really, like, into the standard waves of action figures stuff. No, not uh, so much. Just because that stuff is not really, like, high quality enough to get me excited. Yep. Um, what I am excited about is some news in the Legacy Rangers. So, you may, you know, our listeners may know, the Legacy Range is a range of Power Rangers toys that covers basically Mighty Morphin and beyond. It's like toys for the kind of adult collector. That's right. Yeah, high quality stuff. Yeah, so we've got the Legacy Megazord and the Legacy Dragonzord. There's a Legacy White Tigerzord on its way. There's Legacy Morphers, uh, 
that sort of stuff. Saba and the Dragon Dagger? Yep, certainly. Anything you want to pretend to be a Power Ranger as a 20-something-year-old, you can (laughs) get. Uh, So they didn't really announce anything kind of ground-changing at Toy Fair, but there were some kind of exciting things. The first thing is, when the original Megazord toy came out in 1994, there was uh, a black and gold variant released. Of course there was. So, (laughs) basically, the entire kind of body is black, and all of the stickers and the shiny metal parts are in gold. All the trimmings, basically. Yeah, basically. And apparently that's a, like, Sentai tradition. Yep. Actually, uh, Which is, like, something that you can get, like, often you can get a black and gold version of the Megazord, or at least you could for a long stretch of time. Uh, And so they imported it over here. So they've announced a legacy black and gold Megazord, which will use the new 2010 sculpt. It has all the Zoid Builder ports. Sorry, (laughs) I'm going to try that sentence again. It has all the Zord Builder ports. So you can... I would love some Zoidberg Builder ports, though. That would be great. (laughs) Who wouldn't love Zoidberg Builder ports? Anyway, it has Zoidberg... Ah, Jesus, dick. (laughs) It has Zord Builder ports, so yeah. you can plug all your Dragon Zord into it or your White Tiger Zord, uh, and it, of course, pulls apart into the five separate Zords. It's very cool. Yeah. Uh, I don't know that I could recommend it if you've already got a Mega Zord. Yeah, I feel like that would be excessive, and that's coming from people who make a Power Rangers podcast. Exactly. But certainly if you didn't have one already and thought that this looked cool or were in the market for, like, a very rare collector's edition Megazord. I'd keep an eye out for that later in the year. Sure. So, there's also a range of Mighty Morphin Power Rangers the movie action figures. So, Matt, can you describe to viewers who may not have been aware of the movie, can you describe what the movie suits looked like? Yeah, I guess they're a bit more armour-based than the spandex of the show. They're all in sort of blocky armor portions that give the suits a much more so three-dimensional look Um, and that sort of flows on through the whole suit and they're also um, significant in that they have the gold coins in the chest yes um, they do which is something that all like the early promo artwork for mighty morphin had those coins in the chest like on the toys and things like that but that was never on the show but in the movie they incorporated that um, obviously, at the start, they have the dinosaur coins, and then um, at the second half of the film, they have the ninja coins, so the falcon and the frog and shit. Yeah. So, these toys are movie accurate. They've got, like, the armor look on their costumes and the coins on their chest. Many of them have alternate helmets, because there's a segment in the movie where they go to what you and I know as World Square in the middle of Sydney yep. and kind of do a fight at night time. And they've got alternate helmets with like lights. And, uh, they, so a few of them have different abilities. Like I think Rocky's has a super scope, which is like a heat vision or something from memory. Yeah. So these, these, a lot of these have got alternate helmets or, you know, devices on them and like weapons and stuff that you can use to reenact the movie. So those are coming out later this year. I'd imagine because it'll be the 20th anniversary of the film. Yep. So that seems like the right time to do it. That makes a lot of sense. That stuff is great. What I think you'll be more interested in, Matt, is uh, kind of just a bit of discussion that was happening around it. Okay. And uh, so, as you know, we're desperately waiting for a legacy uh, Thunder Megazord. Yeah, me especially, that's right. The Thunder Megazord is a great Megazord. Uh, a version I'm of sorry, that Michael, that can you said, with... you said you said the best wrong. I oh, sorry. On that. The Thunder Megazord is the best Megazord. That's probably go. true, to be honest. Yep. Um, and it's, you know, it's great. It's very toyetic. It's got lots of cool bits to it. Uh, having a version that could combine with the other Megazords would be great. Mm-hmm. They didn't say anything about it at Toy Fair. Okay. What they did say is that the legacy line is about the fans, 
they want to release stuff chronologically, but they have no intent of ending the legacy line here. They, they're not going to go, okay, we've got the White Tiger Zord, that's all of the Green Rangers stuff, let's wrap it up. Right, so okay. here are some things that Bandai themselves suggested at Toy Fair. They suggested the possibility of a Legacy Serpentera. Oh, that'd be pretty cool. They suggested the possibility of a Legacy Tor. Also cool. I don't know what Tor is. In my head, the word Tor is followed up with the Shuttle Zord, but that is <laughs> meaningless to me because I've never seen an episode of what I think is Power Rangers Zeo. Uh, so uh, no, that that's might not, be that's exciting not to some Zio. of you. Is that the third season of MMPR? Yeah, yeah, or second. Second or third. Maybe second. So, like, very soon for us in our other podcast. That's right. Okay, cool. And uh, also a legacy Pyramidus, which I believe is the Zeo Gold Ranger Zord, but again, I'm kind of out of the loop there. You've got some good times ahead, Michael. You've missed out on some shit. Well, yeah, sure, that's certainly true. But, so what's exciting to me about that is the lack of mention of the Thunder Megazord. Why is that exciting? Because, well, I don't think you'd make a Serpent Terror and not have made the Thunder Megazord. Yeah, I guess it does make that sense. Doesn't, that seems to be a, a bizarre kind of decision to make. So in that case, the only reason to not say we're thinking about a legacy Thunder Megazord is yeah. because what's happening is they're making a legacy Thunder Megazord and it's just not at a stage now that they, they can show be it. revealing it. Sure. Yeah. Absolutely. So my hope is maybe Comic-Con this year. Yep. Uh, which I imagine will be a big year for Power Rangers. We've talked about how we reckon there'll be some pretty big movie news around that time. I sure hope so. So I suspect if you had like a big kind of fandom pleasing Power Rangers toy, Comic Con 2015 is the time to kind of get in and get around it. Yep. I would agree with that. Can we jump back for just for a moment, Michael? <laughs> Perfect. I can't make it. rewinding noises, but go you on. You definitely can't. We've learned that now. Uh, the movie costumes. Uh, we'll yes. probably talk about that more when we get to the movie, but what do you think yep. of them? Uh, my memory as a kid is yep. not noticing that they were different. Okay, that's interesting. Uh, my memory as an adult is that they don't look very great. Yep. Uh, but I think I'm probably very picky. I don't know how other people feel about them. Yeah, I'd be interested to know. Uh, listeners, if you have an opinion, let us know. Because I'm also not a fan. I think it, they look sort of bulky and cumbersome and unheroic. But, yeah, I'd be curious to know what other people think. Yeah, absolutely. So, Matt, where can they let us know what they think? Oh, this is perfect. Perfect set of great, Michael. Nailed it. A plus podcast podcast host. Uh, we have a website which is www.rangerdangerpodcast.com, but you can send us an email directly, which is uh, rangerdangerpodcast at gmail.com. If you'd like to get us on Twitter, we're at rangerdcast. Uh, we're also on Facebook and iTunes and Stitcher and YouTube and Google Plus, and we also have a store where you can buy all sorts of neat things. That's rangerdangerpodcast.com slash shop. Yes. Uh, so, Matt, I think we need to kind of get onto some Dino Charge, don't you? I certainly do. Now, we're going to be starting Fantasy Zordon. Shall we reveal our team names? Uh, yes, we should do that. So, Matt, remind everybody at home who is on your team. Okay, so on my team is the Blue Ranger, Coda. Yep. The Green Ranger, Riley. And the Purple... And the Graphite Ranger, who we don't know their identities yet. Yeah, sure. Yep. So, Matt, what is your Ranger Danger Fantasy Zordon team name? My team's name is Life's a Bitch and Then You Dino Charge. <laughs> okay, yep, I should have gone first because we should have closed with that. 
that's amazing. <laughs> yep. So do you want to tell the listeners uh, who's on your team? Yeah, so my team is the Pink Ranger, Shelby. I've got the Black Ranger, Chase. I've got the Aqua yep. Ranger, who we don't know anything about. And I've got the Silver Ranger, who we also don't know anything about. And my team name is Tyrannosaurus Wrecked. <laughs> okay. Good, good. All right, so we're going to follow our team's progress as we watch this episode, and we'll be back in a yeah, moment you to should recap too. for if you. you don't know, if you don't know what Fantasy Zordon is, uh, we'll talk about it a bit more at the end, but you can go to rangerangerpodcast.com slash Fantasy Zordon. But we'll get to that in a bit. Cool. We'll see you guys in just a moment. If you want to watch the show, uh, the episode before listening to our recap, now's the time to do it. Pause it and go give it a watch. We'll see you soon. Bye, guys. Ranger, danger, ranger, danger. All right, we're back. We just watched Past, Present, and Fusion. And, Michael, I know this is a little bit sacrilegious, but this show is so much better than Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. (laughs) This show is impossibly better than Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. (laughs) Just sort of across the board. It is insane to believe that a show that started as shitty as Mighty Morphin Power Rangers has ended up as exciting and enjoyable as this show. Yeah. It it did kind of blow me away. I guess I'm so used to, like... And it is the start of the season. I'm interested to see if it goes a bit more sort of episodic and repetitive towards the middle. But we're sort of deep in that period of of Power Rangers where it's the same thing every week. Um, Yeah. Yeah, I'm just really curious to see how well this holds up going on. But I was very impressed with this. Yeah, will we take it from the top? I think so. So we get an introduction to the ranch where Riley lives. It's Riley, right? Yeah, uh, yes, I believe so. So Riley's on the ranch. His brother is uh, basically a cowboy, uh, but yep. Riley is practicing his fencing skills in a very poorly lit barn, which is just bad safety, I think. You know, get, get a light He's in there. He's a sword-fighting cowboy, Matt. He doesn't care about safety. <laughs> He's a maverick. But look, as far as these things go, that was a pretty cool introduction to a character. Yeah, and I like that his sword-fighting kind of is like a thing for him. Yeah, absolutely. That's his skill that he brings to things. Yeah. Yeah. And it was really cool how well shot that scene was, too. Yeah, I mean, look, it's not going to win an Emmy... But no. as far as this show goes, yeah, very nicely done. Yeah. So Riley is on the farm when his dog goes missing. Yes, his dog is um, named Rubik. If you're wondering how to get me emotionally invested in a TV show, yep. it introduce a border collie and put said border collie in danger. That'll yep. do it every time. Which, which they do within about three minutes. Yeah. This show is nothing if not efficient. Oh, it is cracking, cracking pace. So they, uh, he, the dog disappears, Rubik disappears into the forest and yep. he's barking in a way that's, you know, Rubik's obviously scared of something. So Riley yep. tracks him down and finds, I believe it's Fury, is that right? Yes, his name is Fury. He's the, Fury. He, he's the Goldar of this show. Yeah. So new Goldar. He's menacing yep. puppies, so he's clearly very evil. Yeah. Um, and basically, the dog's barking, it annoys him, so he's going to murder the dog. And that is the pre-credits cliffhanger. Yep, two minutes into the second episode of this show, and essentially the main Earth-based villain is going to kill a dog. Yeah. <laughs> Escalated quickly. and that's I a, love like, it. It's great. I noticed it here, and I noticed it before the ad breaks um, further into the episode. This episode is structured incredibly well with cliffhangers before each ad break. And it's something I've never noticed before on Mighty Morphin. I don't know if they weren't writing to that previously. but Sure. And I guess it's good before, and it doesn't... It makes me not aware of where the ad breaks are. But with this... I, I'm, it, it keeps you on the hook every few minutes or so. There's something. I definitely think it's something that we've become more aware of 
uh, in the last 20 years, TV is now very much written so your ad breaks fall at your act breaks so that you put something before the ad breaks to make sure they come back afterwards. Yeah, yeah, and that's very clear here, but it's well done. You know, that never feels contrived. Every cliffhanger also pushes the plot along in some way. Yeah, I'm still in love with the Dino Charge theme. Yeah, it's pretty great. <laughs> it is. It doesn't stop being great. There's lots of cool shots in the opening as well that sort of tease things coming up. I'm like, yeah, I'm excited to see all that. Uh, so we come back and we get a sword fight, which I'm always down for a sword fight. Uh, so yeah. Riley's picked up a fencing posts out of the ground and he's using it to yep. fight this guy with his giant electric sword. Fury proves that he's the Goldar of this show by being fought by just a regular dude with a stick from the ground. <laughs> That's so true. <laughs> uh, and in the commotion of the battle, uh, Riley knocks a rock, which unearths a perfect... Um, what's the word I'm looking for, Michael? Uh, uh, skull? Dead. Fossil. Fossil. A perfect dinosaur uh, Matt, I fossil. think you've missed something here, which is yep. that there's a point where Fury shoots lasers from his sword and that Riley deflects them by spinning his fence post around, which <laughs> yeah. makes it, for two episodes in a row, canonical that being cool with a sword deflects lasers in the Power Rangers universe. A sword or a shovel, it should be pointed out. Well, yeah, any kind of thing that's, like, long implement being held in your hand. Yep. And look, I'm okay with that. I'm happy to buy that. No, that should be a rule of our universe, frankly. <laughs> I agree. Uh, so, yeah, he unearths this fossil, and the fossil happens to have the green dino charger nestled in there. Yep. That's uh, lucky. It is lucky. It doesn't morph him straight away, but does give him his Power Ranger sword. And he's able to use that to yep. fight off Fury, which is... It's a pretty cool yep. looking sword as far as, like, clearly plastic, clearly toy swords go. Yeah. Pretty rad. I'd, I'd buy one. Yeah. I'd like to talk about, at this point, his, like, sword fighting technique. He's yes. doing lots of cool, like, backhanded sword attacks and, like, flipping his sword around. It's really cool. I'm a sucker for a good, like sword fight sequence. Absolutely. And I'm really excited to see him maybe get to do some more in the future. Yeah, he's clearly good at it, like, as an actor. And that's always great when they have that sort of talent that they can bring to the show. And I'd like to point out also, we're five minutes into this episode, Dino Charge has still not had any Japanese footage. Really? Everything so far in the episode clearly has a white person in it. Yeah, absolutely. And it's well done. Like, the effects aren't too bad, all things nope. considered, given the budget. I can only so, assume that the next seven episodes all take place in a single room underground. <laughs> to yeah, balance the budget a bit? Yeah. yeah. All right. Okay, so, uh, yeah, it's time for Riley to leave the farm. Uh, and yep. you can tell he's going to become a Power Ranger because he's now wearing a green shirt and has a green bike. He obviously went out and bought those just then because he got his well, dino you know, charger. That's that's one of those things that happens. You discover the green inner gem and then all of a sudden you go, oh, I guess I'd better buy some green clothing because I've got the spirit of the green monster. I've got an, a question. I, it's not really a question. It's just a bit dubious about the character decision at this point where sure. he finds something weird in a fossil so he decides yep. to go to the Dinosaur Museum. I'm, I'm on board up to mm-hmm. this point. He decides to do it for the summer. He's going yep. to go for three-ish months, I guess, to this sure. museum, yep. which seems like an extended stay at a museum. I mean, I don't know not... how far away the museum is. Like, yeah. surely it's not three months' drive away. But I don't know. <laughs> well, maybe they get there very quickly. started reading up. Maybe yeah, he started reading up on dinosaurs, you know? He was like, wow, dinosaurs actually are cool. So I have to go spend three months at this museum. Seems you know, reasonable. Really cover everything. Uh, Matt, I'd like to make a call right now. Yep. His brother is the Graphite Ranger. 
I definitely felt that his brother is a ranger, but sure. His brother is wearing a grey shirt. Yep. So there's two options, and I feel like Graphite is the, like, old, respectable one of those. Yep. Okay. I buy that. So he'll be on my team. He's in, like, an okay dude. I'll take him. That's good. Okay. <laughs> yep. Okay, so he's heading to the Dinosaur Museum. But the very eventful roads in this place. Because yeah, you know, it's a, ri- it's a busy place. <laughs> he's riding his scooter, but it breaks down. Luckily, uh, the other two, like the red and the pink ranger, are driving in their car, and they spot him uh, and pull yeah, so over. Yeah, so their stuff picks up immediately where we left off in the previous episode. Yeah. Which is like a fascinating bit of, like, interplay... How is this all, like, fitting together? It's really interesting and cool. Yeah, it's slightly complexly structured, which I appreciate. Yeah. Uh, so they offer to pull over and help him out, and he says, no, it's okay, I'm going to use the manual. But then a truck drives yep. past and, like, creates such a, you know, kick up of wind that it blows the manual off into the distance. And yep. what I really liked about this is... Obviously, it's Power Rangers. We're going to have to have some silly physical comedy. But that's effective physical comedy, like with proper timing and everything. It's a joke. It's like an actual joke. It's an actual joke. And seeing this compared to, like, the Bulk and Skull stuff, it's it's so refreshing, Michael. I can't properly communicate how good this makes me feel. No, you don't (laughs) have to, Matt, because I'm right there on the same page with you. Yeah. Uh, like, there's even, there's a great, uh, it's called a Gilligan cut, which is like when someone says, no, it's all right, I won't do that, and then you smash to them doing that. And yeah. so there's like, he's like, no, it'll be fine. The manual gets blown away, straight away, him in the back of the truck with them driving. It's just, yeah. it's well it's... cut, it's nicely put together. I'm a fan. It is well, well cut, absolutely. Okay, so they're... Driving down the road, there's three of them now. I kind of like this getting the team together sort of vibe. Yep. You know, it's not like Mighty Morphin where they're already a group of people. It's more like, say, the Avengers, for example, where yep. they find each other in a way that's a bit more organic. Sure. And that's cool. I like it. Yeah, no, I'm with you. So, the, again, driving down the road, but there's another calamity on the road because someone has had a car accident, yep. flipped their car... And one of the drivers is still trapped inside. Yep. This is, like, already pretty heavy for Power Rangers. Yeah, uh, Um, can I say, I think we saved a bit of money on the budget by hiring two terrible actors for this part. But anyway. (laughs) They were great. (laughs) They're not. But they're not. Just come on, guys. Put a bit of muscle into it. Yeah. Uh, speaking of putting muscle into it, the rangers get out of the car and attempt to lift the car up so the guy can escape because they notice that the, there's gas leaking from the car and it's potentially yep. about to explode because, you know, movie logic. Uh, yep. But they try and push it. They're finding they can't quite do it, but then their dino charges kick in and give them yep. super strength to the extent where the car flips. It'd have to go into the about... Air. Three kilometers into the air before exploding. <laughs> it's <laughs> like, amazing. I, I was expecting it to like go a bit over their heads and then them to be yep. shocked by that, but it yeah, goes no, it like, like it was shot flies. out of a rocket. <laughs> yeah, and then it explodes it's, in a way that like it, the car must have been packed with explosives. Yeah, that um, didn't tell me. That was the bomb car. <laughs> It's showy, though, so, you know, I'll I'll take it. Yeah, it's great. Uh, It's interesting that they don't, like, permanently have super strength, but they can get super strength. Yeah, it is interesting. I wonder how much that'll carry on later. Like, if they're having a fight with some Vivix Unmorph, will they be able to, like, put in a bit of extra punch by using the Dino Charges? I certainly hope so, because the Vivix can do some horrifying things that we'll get to. (laughs) <laughs> it sure can. Anyway, they finally make it to the Dinosaur Museum. Uh, yep. See, and what's the name of the Lady Ranger, Michael? I've blanked. Uh, the Lady Ranger is Shelby, Matthew. Thank you, Shelby. So Shelby sees her friends, uh, Coda and the other one. 
Chase. Chase, thank you. <laughs> I'll get there. I swear, okay. guys. I'll work on it. Uh, Coda and Chase, but can't get their attention before they disappear somewhere mysteriously. They're very mysterious, Matt. Dun, dun, dun. So they pull up the car, and they see, a, like, a giant prop dinosaur head. Yep. I guess, in a loading dock. Yep, that's where uh, I keep my giant dinosaur heads. Yep. So Red Ranger decides what he has to do in this moment is get a photo in it. Which, look, I don't blame him. It's kind of cool. I'd do it. He's adorable. Uh, and he's, he's a great character. I really like him. I quite like all of them. Well, actually, there is someone I don't like. We'll get to that. Uh, so he gets okay. into the dinosaur head, but leans on one of the teeth, which activates a trap door to, like, a chute that slides down. Now, you love two this, things- right? Yeah, well, I was about to say two things. Number one, that's really stupid. Number two, that's amazing, so I'll forgive it. (laughs) Like, it's a secret sliding door shoot. They have a secret base under a dinosaur museum that you get to by activating a secret lever in a giant dinosaur head. Yeah, that's the loading dock of the place. That's just amazing. In the place of the building where things are most likely to like attempt to be picked up and or moved, they've got a giant dinosaur head where if you touch even slightly any of its teeth, it reveals the entrance to your hideout. It's a little impractical, but I'm okay with it. it the loading dock is just right on the street, isn't it? It is. It really is. Like At it, it most, like at best rather, it's around the back, but you're yep. still going to have people like delivering milk. They might see that thing like he did and be like, ooh, that's pretty cool. I might play with it since no one's here. I and hope that they become happens. Power Rangers. I hope that's well, how I mean, the other five Power Rangers, like, they just all go to the loading dock for some reason. At least one of them. That would be great if it's just, like, the delivery driver of the milk truck. <laughs> Guys, I'm here for your milk. Oh, I'll get a photo with that. Whoa, secret base and creepy alien dude. I guess I'm a Power Ranger now. <laughs> that's how that works, yeah. Uh, okay, so we're down, they all go down this chute, uh, and they are now in the command center, I'm gonna call it, without its name. Yep. Uh, which, how would you describe it? It's like, like a cave laboratory? Yeah, it's got kind of metally bits and computery bits around the edges, but it is mostly cave. Yep. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah, I, it's cool. Okay, so, it is cool. We're in there. They find a place that has two other Energems sort of in the wall. Yep. And they find that their Energems like drawn to it and they fly into the spaces yep, on the right. walls. Yep, pretty cool. Uh, and then from behind them, Keeper <sighs> appears. Yeah, that was my I, reaction too. He's kind the of a note bit that shit, I've got written down is, ugh, Keeper. I'd kind of forgotten about yeah. him. Now, in the interest of fairness, I do know that in Super Mega Force, the like the mentor figure was just like a plastic Tiki head stuck on the wall. Tiki yes. Face. Yeah. So step up I mean, from look, that. We're talking about a show where the classic mentor is head in a tube, right? So I don't yeah. think it's fair to expect a lot. But the entire time Keeper was there, I was thinking. You know, the scientist lady, she could be doing all this exposition heavy lifting. Totally. Absolutely. And, I, yeah, I I think just having someone who could be an actual actor and move their mouth and eyes properly would be amazing. But um, Yep. Matt, are you familiar with the children's film from the late 90s, Small Soldiers, about toys that came to life? Yes, I was so into Small Soldiers, but I haven't seen it. In, you know, 15 years. Okay. Do you remember Archer, the leader of the Gorgonites? Yes, I do. Okay. He's, like, not a dead ringer for Keeper, but I reckon they're, like, related. It's enough that it's a bit weird. I'll I'll grant you that. Absolutely. I I love that movie. movie. I had a video game of it that I really liked. That was, like, a... Like, um... Top-down view strategy game. It was a good time. I mean, I've seen that film. I 
how that does not seem like the game I would make for you know what this is too far even for us <laughs> you should look into it though like there's two factions in the game uh, you have your Gorgonites and you have your you know evil toy soldiers I'm gonna write, if you have no idea what we're talking about there'll be a link in the show notes to the Wikipedia page it's like Starcraft but they exist in a miniature world so like you're fighting on bookcases and stuff that's okay. Let's get back to Power Rangers, yeah? <laughs> okay, good idea. Uh, okay, so yeah, Keeper. Long ago, there were some stones. I hid them. Uh, now we've got to find them. That's basically it. Yeah, that's all you really need. But what is interesting is at this point, it's revealed that he already has three people working for him. Yes, he does. Uh, uh, there's Coda. Yep. And Chase, is yep. that it? Yes, Chase. Hey, I'm learning. And then scientist lady. Uh, Miss Morgan. Miss Morgan. There we go. Who should probably be Dr. Morgan, but anyway. Yeah. This was really fascinating to me in that they have two rangers that were already rangers before we even get to them. Yeah, I like it. I think it's great. Do you think we're going to get to episodes that are like flashbacks and we see like how they came to meet Keeper or if it's just going to be... If we're just going to pick up from there. Um... I don't know. That's an interesting question. I will say, um, I believe the fourth episode, I think it is, from the description I've read, is very much about the two of them specifically. Okay, right. So, uh, if it's not a flashback origin, it's at least kind of their showcase episode. That's cool. Yeah, either way, I'm very interested to see how that plays out. Yep, absolutely. Now, Miss Morgan, not a big fan of thus far. Um, I think specifically it's the, like, faux rivalry they've set up between Shelby and Miss Morgan. Because it it really just feels stereotypically like, oh, girls are bitches to each other, you know, but the girls get along great with the guys. I guess there's two things that I'm thinking. One is yeah. that she will obviously become an important and valuable part of the team over time. Yeah. And so they're being written like this to give them, like, room and shape to grow, right? Sure, yeah. The other is that she's like a paleontologist, I guess, but she's not ever written as, like, fake intellectual using big words, which I really yeah. like. Like, I do like she's that. just a normal person who happens to be a lady who's a scientist. Yeah. No, I appreciate yeah, that. It probably would be better if it was one of the guys she didn't get along with, because as yeah. it is, it is the only two female characters who are fighting. But I think over time they'll soften, and by episode seven or eight, I'm sure we'll be over it. Yeah, I hope so. And just because I think... If she had some legitimate grievances to be grumpy about, I'm fine with that. But as it stands, it just seems like she's getting really shitty about nothing all the time. Yep, fair and enough. It's really hard hard for me to get on board with that, I guess. Sure. It's like there's super cool dinosaur super, like superhero stuff going on. Can't you enjoy that a little bit? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Everyone else seems to. Yeah, which I love. Absolutely. Everyone's reaction to uh, your Power Rangers now, here's some dinosaur robots, is like, this is the best thing to have ever happened. Which, to be fair, is the right reaction. Oh, absolutely. I couldn't agree more. Yeah. Uh, so they don't get much time for introductions. Basically, they learn that they're Power Rangers. And then... Uh, Miss Morgan gives them a slightly better version of Zordon's, like, you're the Triceratops because you're courageous and shit speech. Um, that references stuff, I can't, like, did she know that that stuff happened? Like, I don't understand. I guess they have a viewing globe or whatever and they can see what's going on with the Rangers. I mean, yeah, I don't know. You know, science. I Maybe they were paying attention to that whole fight thing happening. I don't know, but then she'd have to have known about the Green Rangers as well. I don't know, Keeper does a thing where he, like, waves his arm in the air and shows a flashback to 65 million years ago. So I've got to imagine he could be paying attention to, like, you know, three weeks ago and on the other side of the city. Yeah, sure, okay, no worries. Uh, Yeah, so they learn that they're Power Rangers, and very shortly after that, they learn that there's some sort of disturbance in the city. Yeah, there's seismic activity, Matt. Yep. 
You don't want that. No. And they're going to have to get to action. Yep. So, yay! Yay! It's Power Rangers time. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so they all go grab their dino charges. Uh-oh. So they've got their... their uh-oh. Yeah, one of them can't grab his dino charger. Oh, yeah, that's right. Before we get to that, though, uh, so they have their their inner gems. Yes. And their inner gems come with three dino charges each. Yep. And the dino charges each have a third of the gem's power, I guess, which they can expend at any point to get, like, an extra burst of power, I guess. Basically, you the, the inner gem charges your little batteries... Your little batteries you can use to do cool shit. Yep. Agreed. Yeah, okay. So they yeah, so uh, they're about to do that, but the Red Ranger cannot use his. No. Right now. Because uh uh it's not scienced enough. <laughs> it's it's not time in the episode for that yet. Yeah, he needs to hang back so they can deliver some extra exposition to him. Yeah, that's right. So the others head off to the city. And he gets told some stuff. Yep. Uh, so when they get their energems, that activates their zords, or it awakens their zords. Yep. Um, and that's basically all they tell him, to be honest. Yeah, and I guess that held him back for a little bit. It's interesting, just before this, we get the whole, most of them are on board, but one of them isn't, straight away. And it's the Pink Ranger, again. Like, it was Kimberly yep. Mighty Morphin. I was really expecting her to be like, oh, I don't know if I want to go, <gasps> not, and do that whole thing. <laughs> but thankfully, we were spared that. Uh, no, I'm really hoping, or I was really hoping, I guess it's probably too late, that they'd reveal that Miss Morgan is reverse psychology her into being a Power Ranger. Yeah, that'd because be cool. Shelby, Shelby's all like, nah, I don't know, guys. And she's like, no, it's all right. Go on without her. She's just going to have to, you know, she's going to be useless for the rest of her life. She can just stay like that. That's how it'll be. And then Shelby's like, no, fuck you. I'm going to go be a Power Ranger. Yeah, she actually puts her down for being a waitress, which is another one of those things that really made it hard for me to like her. Sure. Uh, but yeah, so she steps out of it and it's Power Ranger time. Woo-woo. Yep. So Tyler goes on his own, and uh, it's a good thing we're not counting him for Fantasy Zordon, because he takes out about 50 Vivix in, like, one go. Yeah, that happens. <laughs> like, yep. When the, these this and the subsequent scenes were going on, and I realised we had to count the amount of Vivix that were being destroyed... Yeah, that's going to be re- a problem. <laughs> I realised we made a sizable error. <laughs> we might it's have like- to adjust the rules for that. Yeah, it's not like Mighty Morphin where, like, there's just a few punches on a few putties. They're, they're, they're killed by the dozens. It's a slaughter. No, for Pink Ranger, I've just got 10 plus, question mark. Yeah. I, I uh, did so, I, I thought I did okay at counting mine, but I'm not 100% on them. No, uh, we might have yeah. to change the rules there a little bit. Yeah. Uh, so, we get our first proper morphing sequence at this point. Oh, uh, yes! <laughs> uh, yes, it's oh, yeah. The morphing call is still its morphing time. It does have, like, yep. two subsequent stages in that whole sequence, though. Because they I also say... I already don't remember what they are. They say, it's morphing time, then they say, energize, and then they say, unleash the charger... That doesn't sound the, right, but I don't... Unleash the power, maybe? That sounds closer. Yeah. So, yeah, there, there's several steps, which seems perhaps a bit much to me, but look, it looks cool. So, so I'm, let I'm me fine. see if I remember this. You've got to get your dino charger out. It's yep. got, like, a button on top that you push to activate it. You've yep. got to put it into your gun. Yep. You've got to spin, the like, the revolver bit of your gun. Yep. You've got to do a spin on the spot. Integral, that part. You've got to shoot your gun into the air, yep. at which point a giant dinosaur head shoots out of the gun and eats you, becoming That's your right. costume and helmet, Yep, and then you're done. That's right. And, you know, at first I was a little disappointed that there's no, like, cutaway to a morphing sequence. Sure. But if anything, it's a lot more impressive to have that all happen 
like in so the previously shot. in the shot. That's right. Previously, it had cut away to like a like a weird tube. Yep. And then you'd see that all happen in a weird tube. But we're going to have to see them get swallowed by a dinosaur and do that morph in all the different locations that they morph. Yep. It's actually a lot more difficult for them, and I think it, it will be a lot cooler. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I was a little disappointed that the first morph we get isn't a group morph. Like, I yeah, understand sure. the decision why, but I kind of feel like what we get in this is a single morph and a four morph, and it doesn't feel quite the same. Sure. I'm with you. But I'll move past it. That's fine. Yep. Uh, a little disappointed they've taken the dance out of the morphing sequence, but I think we all knew that was going to happen. Barely, though. There, there is a bit of dancing ishness in there. There's still the spin. There's just not yeah. the, like, fancy footwork dance bit. But, yeah. you know, that's okay. Probably because kids here would try that and fall over and hurt themselves. Uh, yeah, if you don't think that would be amazing, you and I are on different levels. <laughs> Well, I'm the one on the podcast who is, like, against children being hurt, I guess. Well, you know, that's a that's a soft position to have, Matthew. I take bold steps. <laughs> you certainly do. All right, so we have... At this point, we get the Ice Monster from last week back. Can you remember what his name was? Yes, Ice Age. I do remember. Perfect. It's Ice Age. Ice Age turns up, uh, and I'm like, oh, hey, there's that guy again. I'd completely forgotten about him. And he freezes some <laughs> of the city... Uh, uh, Matt, some... I think we've glossed over something. Have we? Vivix, which are the yep. little foot soldiers, oh, can I was get that, conglomerate. Yep. Oh, okay. It happened before he morphed, but I think we kind right. of skipped past it. They can conglomerate in their like hundreds into giant, like alien headed, alien handed monsters. Yeah. They look like alien dinosaurs, basically. Yeah, and, and I they, think they're like, called you know, the head of the alien. Yeah. Yeah, that's what it sounds like. So imagine the head of an alien on like an alien esque humanoid body, but its hands are also alien heads. Yes. It's pretty It's intense. great. I love it. <laughs> it's I really like, like the idea of giant foot soldier monsters. So do I. It has a lot for them to do. Yeah. Which is cool. Yeah. A lot goes on in the next few minutes, so I feel we're probably going to miss some yeah. stuff, because it's just craziness and explosions as far as the eye can see. It's just, like, the second best fight this show has ever had. What's the first one? Uh, that's the fight sequence that takes up five minutes of Forever Red. Oh, right, okay, sure, yep. <laughs> that is pretty good. Okay, yeah. so... Uh, so- they fight some it, giant... Oh, the other four rangers show up? Before this, the T-Rex Zord appears and starts helping out. Yep. Uh, and he, he refers to it as Rexy a lot, which really got on my nerves, but that's fine. <laughs> a, little, a little too cutesy for me, but I can take it. Um, Let's be honest, sort of, Matt. If you yep. discovered that you were partnered with a giant T-Rex robot, yep. you'd give it a pet name pretty quickly. Yeah, just not Rexy. Okay, sure. Yeah, so they team up and fight some of these guys on the ground, in the air. There's explosions everywhere. It's pretty cool. Yep. Um, but then Ice Age says that, well, guess what? You, you're you pretty tough, but you can't fight me alone, which is a stupid thing for anyone to say to a member of a team. <laughs> it's definitely <laughs> course... a dumb thing to say to a Power Ranger. That's true. Yeah, because of course what's going to happen is the other four turn up at that yep. exact moment. And you get a point here, I believe, Michael, because... I I got to be honest, technically yeah. the pink and black rangers both do part of the morphing call, but I, that's true. I, think, I think I'm only going to give one for that. I think that's fair. I think they sort of share that one. You know what yes. I mean? Like they, yeah. So that happens. Um, there's a uh, nice and- little comedy beat where Shelby actually doesn't know how to activate her dino charger because she's never done it before. Yeah, but it's cool that she, like, charges it head and she's like, no, I'm going to show you guys. I'm going to do this by myself. And, yeah, sort of 
full yeah. spider on her face, but in a way that's endearing. You know, like she definitely makes up for it. So it's not like she's yep. made to look like a fool. No, absolutely. Yeah. Um, can yeah, I say, so, I really yeah. like there being a New Zealand Power Ranger. Yes. I like that too. I like hearing it's, the accent. It feels familiar. Yeah, and it's just interesting diverse, you know? Yep. It's not like expected token diversity. It's like, oh, that's actually just like something you don't hear very often on TV. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I'm sure they have a lot of it in New Zealand. Yeah, I mean, we uh, hear yeah. a fair bit of it. Uh, we, fe- we hear probably more of it here than they hear in America. Yeah, I bet. So what... How are we going to cover the next three minutes of action? Because I don't even know where to start. I think, start. do you want to just talk about the bits you remember? Basically, yes. everyone gets a spotlight scene to kill, yep. like, a hundred Vivix, right? <laughs> yeah. So they're able to put their charges into their weapons, their morphers, and do, like, a power-up blast, which each of them does in slightly different ways, it seems. Yep. Um, but basically, they just go... Ape shit on some Vivix. It's great. Um, for, for example, by my count, Coda yep. takes out 14 Vivix in yep. his little moment, and Riley takes out 8. And that's, yeah. like, conservative. That's me going, okay, he wrestled a few, but didn't clearly defeat them, so I won't count them. Yeah. Chase takes out at least 8, and yep. Shelby gets a CGI shot where there's easily 20 or 30. Yeah. <laughs> I think, I think, and we'll talk about this more when we get to the Fantasy Sword on segment of the episode. I think maybe yep. if we cap the points for this at five. Per episode? Yeah, per episode. Sure, okay, yep. So that way, like, everybody got five points this week. Yeah, that's probably a good way to do it. Yep. Because it was a lot. It was a lot. <laughs> and I can only assume there's going to be a lot going ahead. Yep. Now that they've so figured out how to use computers to make six stunt guys look like more than six monsters, yep. they're definitely exploiting that for all it's worth. Yeah, which is great. I wholeheartedly approve. Yep, absolutely. Uh, in this scene, we get a bit of the T-Rex Zord interacting with the fight with the Rangers. Yep. Um, two things about this I absolutely loved. One is that a lot of the time it's a practical, like, uh, miniature. Yeah, it's shot it's, really low and, like, yep. really cleverly, and it's great. Yep. It looks gorgeous. The, and it's a few shots where it goes into CG where you're like, okay, I, I can tell that CG, it doesn't look as good, but it just makes me appreciate that practical effect all the more. Yeah, absolutely. And given that we went through a period where we had only CG Zords, I am so incredibly appreciative for Absolutely, that. 100%. And the other thing is that this is the first time we've ever seen convincing interaction of a Zord with, like, a regular size fight. Yep. Like, the T-Rex really gets in there, really tears shit up. Yeah, because we don't see a Megazord at any point, the scales aren't so ridiculous that it's unreasonable for them to be in the same place. Yep. And, yeah, they pull it off reasonably convincingly, which I guess is credit to, to the Japanese. But yeah, I was very impressed. Uh, another thing about this whole fight sequence, I love when they put their charges in and they get the like wrestling announcer guy who announces everything. It's good, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Do you think that he is in universe? Do you think that like their morpher guns speak to them when they put those things in? I have to assume so, <laughs> because like they never talk over him. Do you think that Keeper, like, had to go out and hire a guy to, like, get into an audio booth and record some lines? Yeah, definitely at some point someone had to go, like, sword thing. <laughs> I don't remember what any of them are called. I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, I reckon I ran it's Keeper charger. doing a voice. It's Keeper doing oh. a silly voice. Okay, that's perfect. I like that. So really they're just radios. But he yeah. just likes announcing <laughs> to them at different yeah. points. he's sitting back at the base watching what's going on. And yeah. he's going like, okay, that's going to give him the cool sword. So, sword attack! <laughs> oh, that makes me like Keeper a bit more, now that we've got that headcanon going on. Yeah, so uh, 
the Red Ranger jumps in his Zord's mouth. Yep. Is shot out of his Zord's mouth. Yeah. And shoots another Tyrannosaurus out of his gun. Yep. Which just blows the shit out of Ice Age. Yes. <laughs> and he yeah, says, yeah, just I'm before he explodes, I can't take the heat, and then explodes. Which, yep, like, great, is so perfect. stupid, but endearing at the same time. I can't fault it. Yeah. No. Yeah. I'm at, I've got a so, question. Yep. This episode pretty heavily implies that the Tyrannosaurus Zord and all the other Zords are sentient, or are aware at least. Certainly, yeah. How do you feel about that? It's an ongoing question with the Zords, isn't it? I don't... Yeah. It's weird. And look, to me, I'm not convinced that it's like it goes home at the end of the day and puts its feet up and is like, whoa, that was a hard day at the office. <laughs> um, I, I more see it as like it's a abstract representation of the spirit of that animal. You know, right. so it's, it's not really there. It's just there in spirit in the loosest of terms. Okay. Yeah. I'm on board with that. Does that, that. make sense? I yeah. think okay. so. It's very nebulous, I understand. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. Ice Age is dead. Uh, they he go is. back to base. They do do that. They have their first debrief ever. Yep. Uh, Keeper's worried, Matt. Yes, because that wasn't Fury that they fought. No. They figured out very cleverly. Because previous to this point, they thought that was only Fury on Earth. Yes. Um, which I could understand why they only needed two Rangers at that point, because they probably could have handled that. Yep. If it was just Fury. But no, there's actually others. So Keeper rightly assumes that it's Dredge. Sledge. Sledge. God, I'll get there. You're not good with names, uh, are you, Matt? I'm really not. Sledge is back from deep space, and he's ready to wreck shit. And he's brought his prison ship full of um, bad people to do his dirty work for him. I've got a dun, question. Dun, dun. Yeah, Have hit those me. guys been in the brig for 65 million years? That's my assumption, yeah. That's a long time. Yeah, like, and I think... It's if such a long time it's actually not even a long time. It's so impossibly long, you cannot fathom how long 65 million years is. You've got to imagine if their motivation is like, Dredge says to them, okay, go get the end of gems. If you succeed, you're free. That takes on a whole new meaning when you've been trapped for 65 million years. I just, you can't imagine 65 million years. It's such a, like... You would go insane and then become sane again and do that loop about 65 million times. It's like it's 800,000 human lifetimes. (laughs) It's like it's it's unfathomably long. Maybe we'll find out that they're in cryosleep or something. Probably not. I hope so. Is Keeper just like 70 million years old? Yeah, he's looking all right for a guy's age. Yeah. Looks better than Yoda. It's well, true. I mean, metaphorically better than Yoda. He doesn't physically look better than Yoda. Well, you know, they didn't have, like, Maybelline and shit on Dagobah. I'm just whereas... saying, Yoda had, like, a separate hand that moved the mouth. <laughs> okay. Look, uh, Yoda is cooler than Keeper. No one is going to argue that point. If you are going to argue that point, send us an email, because you're wrong and we want to know. Yeah, good luck with that. Not yeah. even I can take that position. All right, so that's basically the end of the episode. Yeah. God, that, am, so much happened. I am 100% on board with this show. Yeah, I'm dialed in all about it. It's yeah. great. So, Matt, how'd you do with Fantasy Zordon? Well, look, to be honest, I did forget one bit, um, which was discovering a new Dino Charger, so I'm just going to give myself three points for that now. Yep, And sure. then using an alternate Dino Charger, how are we ranking that in relation to this episode? My understanding is that later on in the season, they will yep. get Dino Chargers that are not their primary dinosaur. Yep. Okay. So I think that's kind of what I had in mind. Okay, cool. So we'll leave that. In that case, by my tally... Using the cap that we got 
I got five for Coda. Yeah. Because he defeated five Vivix. Yep. And he didn't didn't enter enter a power up mode or anything like that. Sure. Um, for Riley, he also definitely got to the cap of five, and he also discovered a new Dino Charger. Yep. So he got three points for that one, which brings him to eight in total. And then obviously I have, I have my two for Purple and two for Graphite for not appearing in the episode. Yeah. So by my count, that brings me to 17. Well, perhaps surprisingly, uh, both Pink and Black Rangers this week capped out at their five Vivix. Uh, yep. Shelby also delivered the Morphing Call, which brings her to eight and Chase to five. And yep. Aqua and Silver Rangers were not in this for two apiece. So I am also on 17. Dun, 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 tie. That's good. I like the thought that this might be close. Yeah, when the episode opened with Riley, I was like, fuck yeah, I'm in. <laughs> but that didn't, didn't really work out for me. No. Um, so, for people who were listening last week, you may yeah. have missed on rangerdangerpodcast.com slash fantasyzordon, we've got a section now where you can submit your team. So... Choose them from the rules. If you've got a friend, you can draft with them or you can just pick them yourself. Submit the team. Uh, whoever has the most points at the end will, you know, read your name on air and there might be trophies or something. I haven't quite decided yet. Probably not real trophies because we don't uh, have I'm the budget. Thinking, that's what I think. I'm thinking at the moment they will be paper craft, print your own trophies. That's pretty cool. I may have spent three hours on it yesterday on the train. God damn it, Michael. <laughs> That's what I do. Uh, so we've already got kind of a whole bunch of submissions, some from people we know, Matt, people who've sent us emails before, some oh, from great. names that are completely new to us. So that's kind of exciting as well. Yeah, I love that. Uh, and okay. I thought just to close this one out, I'd end yep. with some interesting statistics. Well, hang on. If we're closing out, there is one thing we have to do. Sure. It is called the Ranger Danger Creature Feature. And what we do with the Ranger Danger Creature Feature is we take the monsters of each episode and we rank them, um, put them on the list, best or worst. We've been doing it with Mighty Warford Power Rangers for quite a while now, but we're going to like kick off our list with Ice Age now that he has exploded. Yeah, so uh, uh, last week we tentatively put him at number one because he was the only monster they'd fought so far. Yep. Uh, he's still really the only monster they've fought so far, but I think it's also fair to rank Fury at this point. What do you say? I think so too. That'll at least give us a point of differentiation at this point. My feeling yeah, so, is uh, Fury goes above Ice Age. What do you think? Yep, I'd agree with you there. He's kind of incompetent and useless, but he is and he less isn't. so than Ice Age. And less so than Goldar at this point, to make that point of comparison. Like, sure. he sort of bungled that sword fight a bit, but not in the, like, making bad strategic decisions sort of way that Goldar tends to do. You know what I mean? Yeah, he just wasn't as good as the guy he was fighting. That's right. Uh, and, and I to say be fair, he, just... he is 70 million years old. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that'll happen at his age. Uh, yeah, no, Ice Age was just, you know, kind of bland. Ice Age exists to be the monster that gets destroyed in the first episode. And that's exactly a perfectly right. valid thing, but I don't think it gets you number one. No, I would agree with that, absolutely. Okay. Yeah, yeah cool. Uh, so, interesting facts you're saying, Michael. Yeah, uh, interesting statistics. Okay. So, we've received in total... Hold on, let me double check. Uh... I think I want to say about 23 total team submissions. Uh, So that includes you and me, and I've also solicited some from some previous guest hosts that we'll get to in a couple of weeks, and we can talk about them. Great. Uh, But so of those, here's some interesting facts. The most selected core ranger is the Blue Ranger, who's been picked 14 times. Okay. Uh, I like Coda, he's cool. Followed by Shelby, the Pink Ranger, 12 times. Yep. Uh, Then the Green Ranger, Riley. It is Riley, right? That's right. Yep. 
Uh, he's That's eleven. Rightly. Times. Yep. And uh, Chase, the Black Ranger, is trailing behind on nine picks. So, if you're interested in kind of getting the rarer, less picked ones, have a look at Chase. See if he works for you. I suspect that that's because Chase hasn't had a lot of screen time, but no, for absolutely. what Chase did in this episode, I'm definitely warming to him as a character. Yeah, I'd agree. But, uh, so, like, they're all a bit sort of eccentric and, like, quirky is not quite the word I'm looking for, but you get the idea. Whereas Chase yep. seems very confident and level-headed, and I really appreciate that in that group, you know? Yeah, absolutely. So in terms of the auxiliary rangers, that gets interesting to me because we don't know anything about most of them yet. Yep, absolutely. So by far the most selected is the purple ranger, who's been picked on a total of 17 teams. Wow, okay. So That's interesting. Very lots of people are digging the purple ranger. Yep. Uh, silver is a close-ish second, 12 times. Uh, and Graphite and Aqua are on 9 and 8, respectively. That's fascinating. To me, Graphite is the obvious pick there because it's an interesting colour name, but I guess the statistics don't lie. No, that's true. Here's an interesting fact. Uh, of the auxiliary teams, Purple and Silver together has been picked 16 times. Wow. Yeah. That's really interesting. Of 24. Uh, something like that, yes. Wow, okay. There you go. As loath as I am to admit it, sometimes math can be interesting. There you go. Darn right. <laughs> cool. All right, well, I think that's probably a wrap on the episode for this week. Yeah, absolutely. I really enjoyed this week, and I'm really looking forward to next week. What about you? Uh, yeah, me too, and I think that's a great sign, to be perfectly honest. <laughs> yep. So next week's is called A Fool's Hour. Oh, that's interesting. Okay. Yeah, I don't quite know which of the rangers that would be about. You know, it's interesting. Besides Miss Scientist Lady, yep. we don't really have a lot of supporting characters at this point. We have Keeper. So, yeah. <laughs> so I, I'm interested to see if we get some, like, Bulk and Skull, like, just people that are hanging around the Dinosaur Museum. Or if, because we have such a large cast of Power Rangers coming up, we're going to see a lot less of sort of like the surrounding Have characters. you figured out Coda's gimmick yet, Matt? He seems kind of like a caveman. Right. So I'm guessing he's a caveman. I mean, I will tell you that episode four is called Return of the Caveman. Okay. Uh, yeah, look, last week, his only big thing was that he really liked Bronto Burgers. This week, his really big thing is that he talks like a caveman. Yeah. Uh, but I really like that the show hasn't made that a thing yet. Oh, absolutely. Like, it's got plot threads yeah. that they're not, ex like, using up straight away. We're going to get to and episode four, and they're going to go, oh, and by the way, he was a caveman. Yeah, uh, everything about the way this show is structured is blowing me away. Like, there's callbacks to, like, both previous parts of the episode and previous episodes in this episode. Yep. And, like, just just that concept by itself, that everything isn't made up the second the writer thinks of it. <laughs> like, there's some, some bad planning. we experiences, haven't we? We have. That there's some planning going on is kind of blowing my mind. They should say, you know, let's summon the Sword of Power, a magical sword that's incredibly useful that we've never heard of before and we'll never hear of again. <laughs> yeah. I love this show, Matthew. So do I, you know, in a loving, hating sort of way. Oh, definitely. That's definitely the sort of way that it is. So yeah. we'll be back on Saturday with a new Mighty Morphin episode. We sure will. And we'll be back next Wednesday with the third episode of Dino Charge. And I can't wait. Yeah, I really hope we see you then, guys. All right. Thank you all for listening, everyone. Have a great week or half a week. We'll see you soon. Yeah, see you guys. <laughs>